ass. All I know is it feels really weird to have your balls hanging down each side of a fucking thong string, okay? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> oh, <man>. Slow down a <laughs> bit. You're right. That's right. Don't just say, oh, you like that maneuvering? Conk. Yeah, I know. It's my, that, my the famous last words of my cockiness when it happens. You like that shit? Crash. Crash. Yeah, we love that shit. Do it again. This shit was amazing. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Let's go. Where are you going, huh? Think you can run for me? What happened? Per no, purple. Let's just leave it as leave it as B. I'm just a car. Don't worry about it. Oh, <laughs> what the? Frick? <laughs> Stop <laughs> moving. No, I can make this happen. Don't worry about it. I got this. This is my driving skills. This is how we tow in my country. In India. <laughs> Typical American <No>. driving. <laughs> Purple, Air please put that. Flare gun. I don't think it works. Oh! Okay, it does. Oh it shit, V! No! Extinguish fire! <laughs> I extinguish fire to myself. <laughs> I think it worked. I died. Oh, what? <laughs> the one time I use a fucking flare gun. Alongside the I'm a car clip. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, I'm a car. I'm not even mad. I mean, like, Britta's gonna Britta, you know? <laughs> they can't get a grenade launcher, right? <laughs> Expect me to get a flare gun, right? <laughs> fucking flare gun's deadlier than the fucking grenade launcher! Run. Yeah, I just got it. Oh, it's fucking blocked off! Get away from me, fucking Wilbur! Huh? Ah! Fuck off! Please excuse my mini temper tantrum. <laughs> it's a flying fish. Thanks for the follow, my friend. Welcome to the Church of Lead Pipe. That's a zombie! That's a zombie. Oh, fuck off. 42 seconds left? Fuck you. Can somebody clip that and what the fuck just happened there? Like that chat? <laughs> We always find ourselves going all down all sorts of funny little holes around here. Maybe if it'll work all the way up the baby's back, it'll work all the way up my ass crack. <laughs> uh. That is not a very functional fucking outhouse, okay? I would have some very sticky cheeks if I tried to use this one. So confused. My senses have picked up something. <laughs> Fuck you. Why don't you sit down and take a break, homie? You've earned it. Yeah. The big one, the main one that helps the most is that PP. That didn't come out right. The other PP. <laughs> and I can't eat my own fucking ponies.
50 points of damage to nearby enemy with each drum beat, okay? I don't know how fast those beats are fucking going, but trust me, I can beat it really fast, okay? Um, <clears throat> don't read into that. We're like so fucking close, I want to just fucking play with it right now. And I mean, okay. Don't read into that. Bye. So, I was gonna try and fucking just tank the tank, and it just didn't. He... Dude. Yep, that hurt. Oh! Oh! Oh, oh God. Two takes. Shit. Two takes. Oh, I'm so fucked. So fucked. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about me. We ain't gonna make this one. It's fine. Ah, oh, shit. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh my god, you did it. Oh, the fuck. Yeah, I have a big butt, and I cannot lie. Oh god, I should never say that again. Honey. Am I more beautiful than this girl? What do you say? Dad, this is my impression of the Kool-Aid man. Oh yeah! <laughs> Oh my fucking god. Keep going, purple. Brilliant. Oh my god. Brilliant. Speaking of epic pickups. <laughs> Good morning. Good afternoon. Afternoon, evening. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, ways and thems. <laughs> My non binary friends. <laughs> My sibs. From other cribs. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, y'all. Welcome back to the Church of the Light Pipe. <laughs> I packed the first bowl, I've taken the first puff, I've passed the ditch to the left. Our stone congregation is now in session. <coughs> How's everybody doing today? Y'all taking care of yourselves and staying out of trouble? Anybody doing anything fun and exciting they want to talk about today? What is up, y'all? <coughs> Sorry, I was moving the chat box around. A little bit there. I was no. I noticed it was overlapping the camera <coughs> on this particular um, OBS scene. <coughs> and as soon as I noticed it, it bugged me. So 
glad to fix it. I'm gonna have to make sure it's still lined up over on this one though. It looks good. Oh, I got you, Daisy. Kick back, relax, enjoy the um show. Oh no, Jazz, you're lagging. Sad day. India docking. Mike three four. We have guidance firing RTS. Passes the bull to the tip. Oh, I've got... Oh, wow. I got a bad grammatical error in there. Holy shit. I have to fix that. The Timmy. The Timmy. The fuck. <laughs> wow. Let's Dexia. Let's go. <laughs> Holy balls. I have to fix that.
There we go. That's a little better. No, what happened is I straight up copy and pasted the pass passes the bowl to the left, and I just changed the tail end of it to have an at user tag on the end. <laughs> um, I did the lazy thing to do it, and it obviously had a grammatical error. <laughs> Because, uh, punctuation matters! <laughs> Waking up from a nap attempt, you didn't even notice. I totally noticed that shit. You know, it's funny, it's as dyslexic as I am. You know, legitly. Um. I still see stupid things like that. My brain will still go. This isn't right. I just don't always catch it. All thrusters. Holy balls. Oh, yeah, totally. And, and then, then... Yeah, but then American English has... Many different sub dialects of it, too, right? Like, we even butcher our own shit. So much stuff. Bowls out, sad day. That is a travesty and a sin here in the church. The bowl shall never be empty. <coughs> so saith the Timmy. <laughs> Find one of the really like more full ones, like this one. Can go on there. And I'll throw one of these other like shittier little ones here. For a moment. And then these 
should be on reverse if I remember right. Yes. Our Lord and Savior of the Pipes. Yeah, go ahead, Daisy. It doesn't really go bad. Um, so, the thing you really got to watch out for with weed, and this is the only thing that can really make it, quote, go bad, and even then it won't hurt you, um, is if you keep your weed in a dry, damp environment, like anything else, it will mold. Okay? That's why, typically, when I buy my buds... They're really dry, like drier than a popcorn fart, and I can literally crush them with my fingers, right? There's no moisture. Because then I don't have to worry about that potential issue. And even then, what happens in that 
situation, truth be told, is it just really makes it taste funny. Because you've got to realize you're putting a lighter flame to that. There aren't too many things that survive fire. <laughs> a good friend of mine once told me fire solves many things. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, you get my point. Yeah, if you're really, really seriously worried about it, which you shouldn't be, um, you can do things like you can get a humidifier or a hemidor and keep your shit in there and that'll keep like moisture levels at a perfect whatever and then you'll have the smoothest smoking fucking weed ever because it won't be too dry either i really don't care if mine dries out because i like mine dry to the point to where if i don't want to throw a little bud in my grinder i can just want to smoke a pinch i can grab a little popcorn bud out of there and just crush it with my fingers like i just did and drop it right in my bowl and quick put a lighter flame to it. Honestly, I the other th reason I like really dry butt is I don't have to fucking put a flame to it forever to get it to burn. I can just hit it real quick with my lighter and it just lights up and smolders, right? If your buds are too wet, it can take some effort to get them to actually start burning and smoldering and smoking for that matter. So... Yeah, you can do that, too. That's typically how I consume dabs most of the time. Since you say these aren't the same thing. Which, technically, aren't. they aren't. But, they are. <laughs> it's all shattered. It's all it is. <laughs> it's just made slightly differently. It's all the same shit. It's got one added ingredient to change the viscosity of it so that it works in a fucking in a vape wick system. That's the only difference between dabs and dab pens. By the way, jumping back to that conversation during the intro. <laughs> uh, I just want to point that out. All right, Jazz. Go take care of your dad. We'll see you when you get back. Yeah, no, you're good, Daisy. It's always good to ask questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Only stupid answers. Okay? <laughs> there's, n there's never a stupid question. The answer might be ridiculous. The question, never. Never, ever, ever. Questions are always legit. And especially when it comes to, like, weed and stuff. Because so many people have a brainwashed, um, propaganda-based view of weed. Still, to this day, there's a lot of stigma with it, especially among the older generations. So, anytime somebody's willing to step up and actually ask the questions, I'm willing to educate. Based on my experience. And 
certain things that I'm not qualified to answer, I will point you in the direction of where you can probably get those answers. All right. Now the inventory management is done. Jesus Christ. I feel like I should go for this one way over here. for ease of getting back to the station. Plus, if it's a bus, there's a number of other derelicts I can hit on a arcing loop back towards the station waiting for it to come around. So, yeah. This one, even though it's like 360 kilometers away, is actually looking pretty good. Plus, that gives me an ample time to do some fucking repairs on all of this shit I've got salvaged. I just gotta wait for my ass end to swing around here real quick so I'm drifting the right direction.
that gives us a lot of time to do repairs too. Um, go in here and select this one. So I keep an eye on all this. And then I need to go in here and lock the airlock so I don't accidentally space myself. And then we can do this. And just chill and start repairing shit. this song. This song is so fucking badass. I love this artist in general. So I can stuff a few thrusters and RCSs down there as well. I'm going to have to go through and like redo all my trade zones one of these days so they got a little bit more logic to them. Cuts are a less, little less weird. Din Rod Griever, how are you, friend? How is your stream? What were you playing? Thank you for the raid. Let me get you a shout out here. Beat you, B. <laughs> What's up, B? 
How you doing, man? You playing Zomboid? Coasters challenge still? Died a few times. <laughs> Such as life in Zomboid, man. Yeah, I don't do the fucking PZ challenges and shit. They irritate me. <laughs> oh, I'm entertained watching people try them, though. Make no mistake. But I like to play all my games very casually. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I've done my fair share of torment too. I've done <laughs> random traits. I've done all sprinters. I've done horror mods. I've done all sorts of shit. <laughs> and there are even games that I play on brutal difficulties too. You know? <laughs> games like Doom and shit like that, which are meant to be played on those hard difficulties. <laughs> Some of those games, certain games like Doom just don't look right when you play on baby difficulties. It's like they feel like they're missing half the gore. <laughs> so, for artistic sake, you have to play them on the most ridiculous fucking levels. <laughs> you know what's funny is one painful year was <laughs> the challenge that everybody fucking had issues with for the longest fucking time. And then we had an update, and some mechanics were introduced, and that changed dramatically. I don't remember exactly what mechanics it was, but some things got changed, right, uh, in the code. And <coughs> all of a sudden, one painful year wasn't as fucking bad as it used to be. So, you know, that was like four times zombies and shit, fucking crazy stuff, fucking not max zombie counts, but like really fucking respectable. But to be honest, those zombie counts are what I would play on normally anyway at this point in my zomboid career, right? One painful year did one thing. It brought out the sadist in all of us. Because even those of us that didn't do the one painful year challenge, we still did stupid things like fucking all sprinters and shit like that. At 16x zombies and fucking just fucking go on death marches. You know, to see how many fucking days we could survive. If we could survive a day. You know? And I'm gonna tell you, fucking after one week of sprinters on 16x zombies, fucking goddamn, dude, I can't, like, I feel like Neo in the Matrix playing with normal zombie speed. I feel like I have 10 years to react. Fast shamblers don't scare me anymore. I'll walk circles around him all fucking day. <laughs> oh, you were here for that, weren't you, Jazz? You saw some of those fucking ridiculous deaths. <laughs> I got some great clips, because I was also playing with all the horror mods, too. So the zombies sounded different. They, like, shrieked, and they had... They, they they whispered things at you and knocked on doors and windows and shit. 
And they also, it, they didn't, like, if a window wasn't barricaded, it was just glass, they would dive through the, the unbroken window. Like, holy fuck, dude. You wait, play with zombies like that for a week, and you're golden with any other fucking zombie setup in PZ. Do that for one fucking week, no, no other zombies will ever scare you ever fucking again. Yeah. <clears throat> this go game's going great. I've now gotten to the point to where I can borderline stay in space indefinitely without having to dock at the station. The only thing that brings me back now is a full cargo hold full of salvage. As I've got a little setup here, if you notice I got all these uh, N2 canisters all sitting here. They're all fucking partial canisters I've salvaged off of derelicts that I've pumped all the nitrogen into these two fucking orange canisters back here. And then when I run out of fuel in my RCS is I just grab a couple of these canisters and bring them over here and I just fucking pump them full of nitrogen again and bring them back over and hook them back up. So I don't even have to go back to the station to refuel. And as far as oxygen goes, as long as I keep changing out or as long as I keep an eye on my fucking CO2 levels, right? Um, I don't have to go back to the station because I have a CO2 scrubber here. And part of its fucking deal is, is it scrubs the CO2 and produces fresh ox oxygen, right? So I'm not using any air as long as I change out my fucking uh, CO2 scrubber cartridge periodically, which would be when I notice I have even one one-hundredth of a kilopascal of fucking CO2 in my atmosphere. If I see CO2 anywhere, but this... Oh, this room actually doesn't even have any CO2 in it right now. Holy falls. Normally there's like 0.1 kilopascal in here because this room isn't hooked up to the ventilator, or the uh, system's life, or ship's life support. The only time atmosphere ends up in here is when this uh, airlock opens. So, when I'm spending some time in here, CO2 does build up in here. But, a lot of times it'll vent out when I open this, and then it'll get picked up by the ventilation system and scrubbed out by my CO2 scrubber. And yeah, I've been playing this game a lot. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> I like the concept of it. The idea of it. I want to see where this game goes. Admittedly, there's not a lot to do beyond salvage. And the NPCs are an example as to why we don't have NPCs and NPCs in Project Zomboid. <laughs> So, so, um, yeah, <laughs> there's that. The AI is pretty painful, to say the least, but the game has so much potential, especially with the shipbuilding mechanics and stuff. I don't know. Honestly, I think superb survivors from Project Zomboid are smarter AI than the AI in this. The AI in this, man, when they see a dead body, they all stand there and they stare at it. It's like... terrible. And they just stand there. And they stand there. They stand there some more. And eventually they starve to death or they suffocate because they don't take off their fucking helmets from their EVA suits. And and yeah, so I got to reset this uh, artificial intelligence. 
It's the algorithm that tells the NPCs what to do from moment to moment. And how to react to various uh, elements of the environment. And the AI doesn't know how to handle discovering a dead body yet. And I actually touched on this in the forums this uh, before I started stream. I had a I posted a nice little topic about it. Not this specifically, but it led into this. Um, what I think is actually happening is I think the NPCs, the living NPCs, don't recognize the dead NPCs as a dead body because the entire interaction system is through a dialogue, right? Even picking up a corpse is through the fucking chat dialogue stuff. So what I think is happening is they're trying to talk to the dead body and they're stuck in a loop of waiting for a response that will never come. And so they stand there like cavemen discovering rain for the first time. As I've said, like, the last three nights. Oh, wow. We've actually got all of the stuff we've salvaged repaired. Balls. Okay. Good job. That's gonna be less time spent docked at the station finishing up the fucking repairs and stuff. We are still, however, six minutes away from the fucking destination. Now we are only going to eat one meal this time. Eating two meals is a big mistake that cost me two hours. <laughs> I had to lay down in bed with a fucking upset stomach for two hours. It was exciting. So that last wreck, the one we just left, had no reactor. In fact, the reactor at one point had exploded and took out part of the engineering section. As I felt really stupid trying to figure out where the leak in the ship's hull was to try and patch it, and then I realized the reactor was gone. I was like, oh, hey, there's the hole right by where the reactor should be. Oh, fuck. <laughs> And I'd already scrapped the fucking door to that room because it was destroyed and I had to scrap it to get through it so I could restore power, right? So I ended up pulling a door off of another fucking doorway and dragging it over and fucking installing it in the fucking door frame of the fucking engineering room <clears throat> so I could fucking seal off that part of the fucking ship so I could restore atmosphere to the rest of it. Holy balls, is that a fucking mess. It took me way too long to figure that out, too. It felt rather ridiculous.
If I'd have been paying attention to my electrical overlay, I would have noticed the blacked out zone in the corner, but, you know... Daisy, are you still there? I have to jump back to your question about how long it takes weed to go bad. <coughs> there is a slight misstatement that I made that I need to correct. So, <coughs> as far as smoking or vaping weed, my statement is correct. But if you want to use it for, like, cooking and such making teas or butters or infused oils, um, stuff like that, that might not necessarily be a true statement then. As if the uh, buds have molded, you don't want that in your product. Again, it's a situation of because it's being cooked, it might be harmless but it's being ingested, so who the fuck knows what it'll do with the stomach's fucking ecosystem, right? So, do keep that in mind. My statement was under the assumption that it was being smoked, not uh, ingested. Anybody on YouTube who actually has more information on this particular subject, feel free to comment down below. <laughs>
<laughs> I love the name of this ship. Where did you park it? Question <laughs> mark. Oh, yeah, anything can get mold on it. Mold just requires a damp environment, really. Anything can mold. Think about it. Your your basement walls, where it gets damp in the basement and stuff and never really dries because there's no sunlight, mold grows. And mushrooms and anything else, it's a kind of a fungus. So that being said, you know, anything can grow mold. All right, a daisy. You have yourself a good night. Get some sleep. We'll catch you later. Okay, this ship's gonna be a nice haul. <clears throat> Here, see this. This might actually be the same as the ship that I just left, actually, now that I'm looking at it. I do not see a functional power switch, so we are going to have to do this.
Oh, there's the power switch. Oh well, I've already bypassed it. Catch you later, Shinra. Thanks again for the raid, man. I appreciate you, dog. You stay safe. Much love. I told you it'll be fine, chat.
There we go. Now I just gotta let the temperature go up. And that's okay. I've got parts out here that I need to pull before I get out of my EVA suit anyway, so. Holy shit, dark! My god, dude! What's up? The love! Holy crap, I have to pause. I have to pause. Shit, dark ente! Coming in with the 100 gift bomb. Jesus. How many? Who? How many? <laughs> you know, that was probably meant to just be 10. Right? Right? That was only supposed to be like 10. <laughs> you accidentally put an extra zero on the end. Dude, I love you, man. You're fucking awesome. And now I have to sit here and see who got what here. Um, Age H57, Postal Pyro 62, Moon Bear 7777, Ben Fleet Games, Oso oh Amy, Averin Rose, Duracell the Battery, Mucha Frap, My BFF is. Not finishing that. Enrique 090909, Jeff 102, Tony SK 79, Canny Dammy, Inspirational LOL, Hit Shit, JK Gamer Leet, <clears throat> You Galu, Anjura Sensei, Anjura Sensei, One Life X4, gee, I wonder who that is. Um, Roskill, Misfit 621, Fan of Cards 25, Duplicitous Bishop, Chris Akira, Akintha, Akintha XO, Blue Barian, Ode to Power, Wilhelm, Wachzav, Red Siric, Dog It's. Dog is ten pound, Ambassador Al Von Buki, Young Deer, Fierce Tigre, Novem, Non Ver, Non Vemur, Red Cat Noodle, Silver Dragon O twenty one, Zvad Disodium, Zathras sixty, Mister Woot, Bujangles, Onosaurus, Shadow Valentine, Vermilion Jack, Skills one two three S. H Squishy, Theoden91, Kosakov92, I Am Omnivore, Creamster86, Ricky Moore2020, Sithus, Clear Bully, Conductor Deadly, Neuronoid, Shinra Griever, who was just in here, just raided us and just took off. Love you, man. Uh, S Brules 117, Coyote Dragon, XXSRXX, a random person on Twitch, Vinny, Voice TKD, Reg Rivers, Child is Fool, Stalemate Plays, Orin Terry, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Orin Ter 120, Uh oh, Bubbles, Laundering 710, GWR Skull, Hexy Decimals, Art by Pale Horse, what? Art by Pale Horse? My name is Artur. 
Jipochi, Psycho Warren, Rosa Petra, Scary Horseman, I Am Fericho, Bang a Tang, Jack Mercer, June Asp, Prime Noodles, Mr. Rady, Grim Some Heart, Reeton XD, Ever 569, Zelen Creaky B, Star Wister, Leo Pugs, Atoxa Bap Bap, Pebble Plays, Nano William, Fix My Head 77, love that name, Death Wish, Nawi, Super, uh, Super, excuse me, Super Soup, Zatran, Dark Lion, and Ye Pirate Gold. Your keyboard, you swear. Enjoy your gifted subs courtesy of Dark Ente, my good friend, and one of the mods here of our community. Awesome, dude. What do you know, man? I'm sorry, I'm out of voice now, because that was a lot. <laughs> eh. Dude. Salud. Mm. So what are you up to tonight, Dark? Ah, Easter vacation? Nice. I'm doing all right. Uh, this is Astronauts. It is a space salvage survival game set in the Neo Scavenger universe. Basically, I don't know if you're familiar with Neo Scavenger, but you have the events on Earth that led to what is Neo Scavenger. This is the people who are stuck in space side of it. And basically, you go through a character generation that is uh, living out the years of your your starting career, which is a shipbreaker. You just pick a bunch of options, adventures, and work on traits and whatnot. Everything costs X number of years to do, and you have chances of getting money and stuff like that to start the game with. And skills and traits, which are the more important thing. Um... <laughs> Uh, so once you go through that, then you, uh, at the end of your career, you, you basically, you retire and you take out a mortgage for your first ship that you have to fix up, which really just needs touch-ups, but then you have a, uh, a mortgage that has to be paid on a schedule as well. So in the middle of all this, you also have to go out and salvage stuff and bring it back to the salvage kiosk to be sold so you get money so that you can pay for your docking fees in port and pay for your mortgage and eventually once you pay off your ship then you start getting bigger ships and then starting do start doing large scale ship breaking operations which is what i'm doing right now 
I just docked on this ship and I'm getting everything ready to be just kind of hauled onto my ship. And once I have a full cargo hold, I will uh, go back to port and sell everything. The last time I was in port, I sold like a million dollars worth of cargo. It was fucking insane. It is very early access. Um, the NPC AI is dumb, to say the least. Um, but as far as the shipbuilding mechanics and the ship salvaging mechanics and ship maintenance mechanics and even little things like atmospheric pressure mechanics and stuff like that, if you'll notice by my cursor, I've got these KPA KPA numbers uh the blue is nitrogen the green is oxygen the white is co2 and the um uh red is the temperature which is in kelvin and those are things that you have to monitor which the temperature just hit safe levels so i'm going back to my ship change into something more appropriate for this job. And as long as I don't get struck by a micrometeor while I'm doing this, I should be fine. Oh shit, tier 3 resub. Dark. I don't deserve it, man. Thank you. Oh my god, it is so fucking complicated and challenging, dude. Like, okay, I'm gonna show you something cool. Like, see, I have a f uh, uh, an IC reaction, or uh, IC reactor, which is internal confinement fusion reactor, right? I, it's not turned on right now. There's the control panel for it. <laughs> power it up you switch your power bus to battery and your core purge to rgh then you let it sit you watch your last cap light wait till it turns green once it turns green you flip your lasso line and your peel fleet feed switches then you flip your cryo switch then you hit your fuel regulator then you align your forward and then your rear field coils turn on the mhd and then hit the ignition And then you switch it over to charge, charge ship batteries. Yeah, pretty much. I can choose to keep what I want, more or less, and sell the rest. Like, I've got a nice haul. This is all getting sold. All of this crap that I've got laying around here. I just finished fixing all of this shit up before I docked on this derelict ship. Oh, but wait. There's more. I'm not leaving yet, but... Because I still got to salvage shit. Not sure what the fuck happened there, but... This is the navigation system. You got relative velocity. You've got cross velocity, you've got range, bearing, estimated time of arrival. You've got your your RCS fuel, and then your delta velocity, which is the actual velocity that you are moving. And then your power reserve here, and then all of this is information with about the ship that you have targeted. This is your docking computer. By the seat of your pants fucking docking ring. If you have anxiety problems, you turn off the proximity alarm while you're docking, because otherwise you'll have an anxiety attack and you'll fucking die when your heart explodes. Okay? I do I do dock silently. Fuck that proxy alarm. Um 
Honestly, it took me two characters to pick up the basics. And probably about 10 hours of YouTube videos. Of watching what people did and then not doing that. Some of the things, like the docking mechanics and the flight mechanics and even the reactor look more complicated than they actually are. As, especially as soon as you, like with navigation, as soon as you understand how relative velocity and cross velocity and all of that shit actually works and what it means, moving through space is really easy as long as you have a point of reference. Well, all I gotta say is, I don't work for NASA, I seem to be doing okay. Either way, though, the, the in-depth mechanics of this game is fucking great. And then I've had situations where I've been struck by, like, micrometeors, which do not show up on your scan, or your, uh, LADAR radar system, by the way. Um, and they w have punched holes in my fucking ships before, and I've had to make emergency patches and stuff like that. And let me tell you, that's a scramble into your EVA suit because oxygen just starts venting. And once your oxygen level reaches below... You're supposed to keep it around 20 kilopascals of pressure, right? Once it drops below, I think it's 16, then it's considered a thin atmosphere, and you start moving a lot slower. But at that level, that's not what's going to fucking kill you. It's the temperature drop that's actually going to fuck you up. Once it drops below 10 kilopascals, then you're really fucked. Okay, and then at zero, then your skin, like, starts going... And you turn into a balloon. Okay? Start foaming at the mouth and shit. The reason I have nitrogen in the atmosphere is it's not required, but it does help with fire control. And it's harmless. That's why I don't mind running oxygen. Or running nitrogen systems. It's basically, it simulates Earth's atmosphere, which is 2080, give or take-ish. I feel like there's like a micro fracture somewhere in the fucking hull. I'm hearing fucking air hissing from somewhere. But it doesn't look like we're actually losing pressure anywhere. Everything's pretty level. Oh, no shit. That's over by you guys? Holy shit. Wait, what? Dark? 
You say something depressing like that, and then you gift me 58 more subs? Dude. Who do we got this? I love you, man. But seriously, it, uh, any injuries, fatalities? Like, what happened? Like, oh, I had to reach the goal? I got you. Uh, so we got Isotope, Night Shadow, Cack Stilts, Kitty Biscuits, Send Denoyer, Babla D Dragon Ash, Josama, Oetsesco, Makotaru, Ren Tails Comic, Papet, Red Thunder 629, Extra Veggies, Zan Wenchfi, Burko 9, Dead Beef, Queem, Queedam 420, Girthworm, <clears throat> that's OG Girthworm, Vin's Metal, Our Empress, Jebediah, Rage Cage PC, Volpicora, Ash, Heart of Ashes, Bad Shot Bob, Shiva Ray, TTV Drugs, Lol EQ 80 Womb Badger Echelon Marco Spells Grigorsu Gibbs Kamui Sen Cuddy Hunker Madman Meatball Paul Man Bunny Man or er, Paul Man Bunyan Man Go or Gogs one forty seven SQ Wumpus Wacky Wayfaring Dead Nas Centauri B almost over Omaha forty one NSW or er, NS Wyden Messenger eighty nine Simsky Moon Dog King Godzilla Chiangles Ballions <clears throat> Gurkiwan, Olaf Grimjaw, Raced Oz, Shah 696, Soko Lannon, I'm a Golden God. Enjoy your gifted subs. Courtesy of Dark Ente. Oh, I did see that. That. Came up, that popped up on my uh, fucking uh, Facebook feed right before I started stream. I didn't get a chance to look into it. Jesus Christ. Fuck, man. We have a pass two command now. You can do um hold on it's pass two as in teal so you can pass it to somebody specific you just add it you just at somebody Jesus. Any fatalities? Oh, Jesus. My weed jar is just... <laughs> My weed jar is seeing stars.
drag with the thousand bits uncle thank you very much man I appreciate you <coughs> I'm pretty sure y'all just bought my next bag of weed like pretty damn positive that I just bought the next bag of weed <laughs> thank you very much guys I appreciate it <coughs> <coughs> No, don't pick that up. Don't pick up the trash. <laughs> the bitty jewel is just being swarmed. <laughs> Uh, he's just swimming with the stars. All that air hissing is bugging me really bad. <laughs> that air hissing is super fucking bugging me. It's making me nervous. Like the hull's gonna fucking blow out or something. But I'm not losing air pressure, which is really confusing me. I shouldn't be hearing that hissing sound. And the pumps are currently turned off because, well, I'm not gaining pressure either. Wolf, what's up, my man? How are you doing? New command. I'm eventually do one for dabs too. 
No, I was just demonstrating. I mean, you can if you want. I'm not gonna twist your arm into smoking more weed. If you don't want to smoke more weed, but you know, like, <laughs> you know. I have to grab that car. It's hard to haul all this shit around without these carts. Without the cart, I have to haul everything one piece at a time. It takes fucking forever. No, I just load everything that fits into these carts into these carts, and then I fucking drag the carts back, and then I unload the carts wherever I want them. Uh, probably. I ain't got nothing against Eminem. Comparatively speaking, he's got some of the cleanest rap you'll ever hear. <laughs> Especially to visit, compared to visit that. Compared to today's standards. Where's the good weed smoking music? I don't know. Fuck you, man. I lost the game. Oh my god, those fucking birds are back. Fuck. No, I need to get rid of this fucking air conditioner that's in this fucking window that I got back behind this door. That'll instantly solve the fucking problem. That's where their nesting is in that fucking air conditioner that weighs 500 fucking pounds. Been there for fucking... 30 goddamn years. Okay, maybe 25. Probably hasn't worked for like the last 20.
Oh, that's probably the part of the problem. <laughs> well, now you gotta work harder, Matt. <laughs> How you doing, doing? Ooh, what? I'm confused. What the hell did I just miss? Man, I'll smoke weed forever. <laughs> okay. If it's weed, I smoke it. Right? It's the way it is.
devil stick. A claim of blood. Only we'd call it a smoke. Good luck, man. It's gonna be expensive. That's fair, too. That's why you'll see me, like, hit the bowl and then pass, or just set it down or pass it along or whatever. Like, and then I come back to it later, take another hit, set it aside. Oh no, that's... I can't remember the last time I had a brick wall smoke. The only thing that stops me is the potential of running out. That's the only reason I'm like not super careless with my weed. That being said, I do smoke a lot of fucking weed.
let's do it. <laughs> I was trying to figure out where I was going to put this <laughs> fucking reactor. <laughs> but also, honestly, since I've got a reliable source for these dab pens, <laughs> bought a handful a couple weeks ago, like five of them, and I just rotate through them. <laughs> None of them died yet. I'm sure, they will eventually. I know a couple of them are probably pretty close. Alrighty, Dark, it was good to see you, man. Thanks again for all the gifted subs, dog. I really appreciate all the support, man. It helps a lot. I hope you have yourself a good weekend, a good Easter holiday. And since you're on holiday, man, you should drop by a little bit more. Miss you, dude. Awesome, man. We'll catch you later. You stay safe. Much love.
Hey, what's up, Dark Sun? It's another day. Another day, another data. Redoing my barter zones on my ship.
actually you know what do this I can bring this We're just gonna not use any of the rest of the stone here. We're just gonna do this. Clean up the barter zones a little bit so I can utilize more of the space.
What's up, Nightmare? How you doing, man? Ever 569, thank you very much for the follow, my friend. Welcome to the Church of the Lead Pipe. If you partake in the greenery, please feel free to have a seat in our rotation and take a puff. If not, never fear, we always pass the duty to the left, but most importantly, do have a good time. How are you this evening, my friend?
patience. It's all about patience, Chad.
was actually kind of a perfect dock. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's got a reactor and whatnot. It's still worth fucking digging into.
pressures there. That's a score. Whole fucking four with four liter flask of water. That's like water for days.
grab the thrusters. Is that another PDA right there? Or is that a floor tunnel? No, it's a uh, PDA battery.
Mirror Drag, Uncle, thank you very much for the resub, my my, my friend, my homie, Uncle. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. 41 months of support at Tier 2 now. Or has it always been Tier 2? I don't know. But thank you, man. I appreciate you.
yeah, it likes to ship up instead of back when you pull thrusters. So if it's thrusters set up in a line and you do the bottom one first, it'll try to put it inside the uh, one above it. And when it can, it'll shift it outside forward instead of backward. Mildly annoying. I forgot. So I guess I can get all these thrusters now in one trip because, well, I can't get the one. That's why I went to go put the CO2 scrubber down because I was just going to drag that in without a cart. It's kind of a big enough piece. It's kind of semi-worth it. But, no, I don't need to. Some other scrapper can have it.
these guys don't give me anything. Give me that shit. Strange. I didn't realize this ship didn't have a helium tank. How do you run the reactor then? Because it needs deep. E2O and fucking helium.
Mm, and so we got space for one more. Well, it's not something super fucking ginormous. Although, I'm gonna be right back. I've got to consider our angle station right now. This is kind of a good lineup to get back to the station. It's a little goofy, but honestly, if I were to go to this rack, by the time I would be done, it would be like at a really bad, bad angle. So really, our best opportunity to go back to the station is actually now. As much as I hate to say it. Disconnect. That's about as flat as we're going to get. It's gonna be quite a fucking haul. Five reactors. That's five hundred grand right there. Four hydro intakes. There's gonna be about a hundred grand. Nav stations will be a couple hundred grand. 
I got a bazillion of everything else.
What a time for an autosave. Fuck you. Alright, back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have too many things left to repair, honestly. Got an intake. A lot of it should already be done. It's just a couple of items, really.
That would appear to be everything.
you seriously don't want any of this? Wow. You know, I'm not liking any of these prices right now. When's his next update? 15, 12, and 10 minutes. Yeah, we're gonna wait 10 minutes. And see if we got a better fucking price attitude. Them. Always need backpacks. Thank you. 
Yeah, you can fuck yourself. Not, not for the reactors. You can totally pay a little more for the fucking nav stations, too. RCSs are a bit better priced, though. Overall, a better price and everything, but still not enough.
Still a shitty price for the fusion reactors. You know, let's get rid of because this is a good price for the thrusters, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of all of them. Same with the RCS intakes. And I like I'll I can deal with that price on the giant canisters too. Yeah. 
Okay, so in just the parts that are not nav stations and uh, reactors and pumps and fucking EVA battery chargers, <clears throat> those are the only things I haven't sold. There's 317 grand right there. Next update is in four seconds. Next updates in five Definitely take that to the nav stations. I can go with 150 grand for the reactors, that's fine. me with the pumps and the which those go to the main pumps. Come on.
übrig gehabt. Ja, zwei noch. Gabe Valentine. Holy shit, how are you doing, dude? Good to see you, man. Give me a second, I'll give you a shout out. I just gotta get to a point where I can save and reload my game. Oh, just laying down for bed? Oh, I gotcha. Let's reload this game. Yeah, no problem, man. I ain't seen you in a while, dude. Oh, I got you. I know how that is. Oh, shit, we got a pup. Fuck, I need to, like, pack some fresh weed for this fuck. Juliet, India. I don't Our want the cashed ass hit, with information, Lima. Let's get this reloading really quick here. <laughs> yeah. So what have you been up to, dude? Really bad on the holding front. <laughs> I feel you there, man. Holy fuck, do I feel you? <laughs> <laughs>
talk about a navigation nightmare. All right, sounds good, Gabe. Get some sleep, man. We'll catch you later.
I should have updated my fucking salvage license. I'll just have to keep an eye on the clock, that's all.
Hey, what's up, Drene? How are you? I'm doing all right. Just living life as a salvage stoner. Um, this isn't my ship. This is one that I, uh, just flipped the power switch on and it lit up. It's a derelict. I'm in the process of salvaging the stuff outside. And dragging them into the main hall before I go back into my ship and take off my EVA suit and come back in and work inside. Just wait for the temperature to slowly go up. It's already got atmosphere and everything. As seems to be the case with most of these derelicts, I've noticed. Their hulls are actually intact, usually, except for, like, one of the last ones I went to. That one had a hole where the reactor used to be, but... So yeah, once I get all the stuff that's outside, I can do the rest of the work inside in the comfort of my fucking jeans and t-shirt. <laughs> I might have to fix this heater. In fact, I'm actually going to need to do that really fast. Something's not right here. Restore you really fast. And then I'm going to wire you to this thermostat. That way I don't have to rebuild this one. That should help with the temperature problem. Kind of a big ship for two heaters to heat up, but 
it'll get there. Yeah, sometimes I can come in and just flip the switch. Sometimes I got to put down a few jumper cables. Just, just jack power directly from one of the batteries to the power grid. Sometimes it's just a simple break somewhere in the power grid that I got to fucking put a jumper in to bypass. You know. Either way, the vast majority of them, I can get them up and running. As long as there isn't a hole in the hull, they'll hold atmosphere. It actually makes doing this shit a lot easier.
actually out of scrap steel. No, I'm not. Okay, say. I am getting low, though, it looks like.
Oh, it actually broke. Damn. Bad day. Okay.
This whole ship is just getting to be great. I can see where my borders for each trade area is. I wish I could overlay this without having this window open, but you know, whatever. Let's go there.
apply damage. What is that? Small mechanical parts. What took damage over here? Oh, you know what? I bet that happened when I uh, flipped that other ship. When I, there was that one ship when I was undocking. Didn't seem to do any serious damage, but I got mechanical parts outside my ship that I'm going to have to gather at some point because he, he's trying to pick them up to repair shit. This next ship we dock on has a secondary airlock. We'll float outside and grab those parts. So he stops trying to pick them up. There is something outside he wants to fix, and I don't know what it is. It's probably the airlock, honestly.
I almost fucked that up. So bad. I didn't start slowing down until I was 600 meters away. Normally I start dropping speed at about a kilometer. Like, I had my finger on the reverse all the way up until I clicked the fucking docking clamp button. That's how close that was. Oh, sorry, Chad. I just about shat myself. Seriously, I think I need to change my fucking britches here. <laughs> A little squishy. And uncomfortably warm. <clears throat> if any of you veterans of this game who 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 saw what ha what I just about fucking did are probably going to be screaming at me going, oh my god. <laughs> now, admittedly, you can dock at any speed under 100 meters per second. I just find for alignment purposes and stuff like that, It's in my best interest to uh, be moving a lot slower than that. Still gonna need to scrap that door, but and 
And now I've got to scrap that door, too, because it just degraded right in front of me. It just fell apart. I was contemplating trying to route power to the fucking door, but that became not an option. Uh, Vermilion Jack, thank you very much for the follow, my friend. Welcome to the Church of the Lead Pipe. If you partake in the greenery, please feel free to have a seat in our rotation and take a puff. If not, never fear. We always pass the duchy to the left, but most importantly, do have a good time. How are you this evening, my friend? ship build this is. I was looking at buying one of these. Thank you. 
Ooh, what was that? I feel like that was a micrometeorite fucking going ding off the fucking hull. The next thing I want to be able to do is salvage parts and make my own space station. <coughs> A place where I can bring and store all of my fucking salvage and shit. season ever go there. I mean, if they do, that's cool. But...
Here, I missed a thruster over here. Jesus Christ. Hmm. Surprised there's no turbo air pumps on this ship.
here so I have easier access to them. And I can keep grabbing pieces of parts. Fuck you, autosave.
Yeah, a puke scrubber can go there along with a blister. And a blister can go there. I'll be right back, Jay.
I really should go outside really fast and grab those fucking stupid mechanical parts that are floating out there outside my ship. Especially with the amount of time that I've got to repair shit. Actually, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. Fuck it. Home. Zones. Unforbid. Go here. This. Let's throw on our EVA suits. Go get those fucking parts before they continue to drive fucking nuts. He wants to go outside and get them. And sometimes it sticks his AI.
There, now you have no reason to want to go outside. There's nothing out, there's nothing out here for you. Okay. Jesus, oh, now he's hungry and thirsty. Ain't that just ducky? We'll deal with that in a minute.
Hey, bird! How are you, my good friend? It's good to see you. Did you see that thing I tagged you in? I saw it and it reminded me so much of you. You have no idea. <laughs> well, actually, I'm sure you do have a good idea, but... Oh, I miss you so much. <laughs> Thank you. It's kind of a mess right now, though. <laughs> it's actually a mohawk, believe it or not. I just, I haven't cleaned it up since the uh, end of last summer, you know, because winter and skin. So, yeah. But one of these days, when I find a hair person that doesn't want to charge me 50 fucking dollars, I'm going to get it cleaned up. And it'll be a mohawk again.
<laughs> I know, right? I've only gotten it, like, trimmed up, like, a couple of times in the last, like, what, six years? This is all still the hair since fucking 2018 when I chopped it off last. Do you remember? <laughs> remember how short it was? <laughs> Oh no. Sad day. Well, lucky for you, I'm up all night. So you can hang out with me and the rest of the stoners. I can't promise you it will be exciting. At the very least, we'll be so boring you'll pass out. Problem solved. Jesus. Oh, I know how that goes. Oh my god, shut up. I hate that thing. It gives me an anxiety attack. <coughs> oh, look at that alignment chat. Oh, that's beautiful. It's not perfect. I'm still drifting a little bit. But, god damn. Oops. Now let's n try not to hit this dock at 100 meters per second. And just kind of casually coast in. Especially since there's like another ship kind of on the other side of this. Probably about... 10k out, tops. Drop her down to about 13 meters per second. Time to dock 20 seconds.
Come on, docking clamps. Light up. There they are. Back in the speed off. Five meters per second. Two. One. Point two nine. We're in reverse now. Oh, lost the dock link. There it is. There we go. <laughs> this is called Astronauts. And what this is, is a space salvage survival game with some very realistic space flight mechanics. And, ooh, I don't like this spin. Um, thing I'm really worried about is whether we're drifting towards this over here. Which, it's question marks, so we are not. So, what direction are we floating? That direction, it looks like. I'm okay with that. Even though it thinks we might be floating that direction, too. Or that direction. Or that direction. So, basically, as you can see, the tech is pretty, like, Apollo mission-style tech, right? Um, basically, there's a disaster on Earth. These are the people who are left in space. They're the survivors in space. There's a whole society, mostly a corporate-owned society, that uh, <clears throat> runs everything. Your job as a retired shipbreaker is to go out and find derelict ships and salvage the goodies off of them and bring them back to port and get paid for them. You start out with, well, first, character creation is a series of choices that you make that are basically a brief story that represents your shipbreaker career, your life from the age of 18 till whatever year you decide to retire and start looking for ships, right? Um, through all these choices, you get different bonuses or negatives, positive and negative traits and such, and everything costs X number of years to do in this system. So you could start out as a very young but fucked up character, or you could start out as an older, not so fucked up character. The drawback on that is shorter lifespan for the character. Age death is a thing. Um, <clears throat> once you've retired and you've picked your ship, you are given a mortgage for that ship that you have to pay off. So you have to go and go find shit to salvage and bring it back to sell to the scrap dealers. Ideally, you want to do this legally which means you have to spend $5,000 right out the gate for a salvage license. So the cops, which are just corporate fucking thugs, don't bother you, right? <laughs> outer space tow truck. More like more like those one of those outer space... Uh, you know the guys that drive up and down alleyways looking for fucking shit to throw in the back of their truck to bring home and fucking scrap? You know, the old the old truck driving scrappers. That is basically what you are. In this. Now, there are pirates that do things illegally, and they will forcibly dock with your ship and accost you and try and mug you. I have skills in combat for that reason. Um, there are cops that, just like in the real world, if they have a bad day, they'll just stop you to stop you. I've had that happen once. Like, and they did it at fucking high speed, too. Like, I was cruising at, like, some fucking seven kilometers per second for my actual velocity. And they docked on me like I was fucking some fucking kid that didn't know how to fucking fly. They're just like, thunk, and fucking locked me in place with their docking clamps. And then the one cop came aboard, and they're like, do you know why I've stopped you? 
and I'm just thinking, first off, we're not stopped. We're still drifting like seven kilometers per second in a direction that I can't control. But no, I really don't. And it gives me a bunch of like menu options and stuff like these little dialogue boxes, these green block boxes down here. Um, I had things like these to respond to this cop and it was like ask for credentials say no admit to salvaging blah 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 i obviously i'm like just thinking like i would in real life ask for fucking credentials you know badge and fucking number whatever blah they produce fucking credentials that look legit and i'm like hmm well fuck then in my menu options pop show salvage license i'm like hmm Multipass. And the cop just says later and gets off my ship and docks and leaves. But the thing is, is they can check your transponder to see if you are a legal salvage operator, right? Um, all that shit, when you purchase that salvage license, it's linked to your transponder, as far as I understand. So they can fucking check that shit on the fly, right? So why would they have needed to stop me? So, in other words, that cop had a bad fucking day. And was hoping to catch me do something, like, fucking illegal or something. Or it could have been a matter of he was looking for a pirate and assumed my ship was stolen, right? So, it could have been the old classic, well, you fit the description. <laughs> Lilu Dallas Multipass. <laughs> now, one of the cooler things about this game is it is real time, real time. Right? So, one second in real life is one second in this game. But you can dilate time. I can speed time up and slow time down as I need to to do things. Okay? But otherwise, if you let it just sit and chill, it's one second is one second. Which is kind of fucking cool. I like it. So that when you when you realize that a shorter lifespan character, aka an older character at start, isn't necessarily so bad. When you realize like fucking at 16x speed, that's still like fucking two months of fucking playing at max speed doing nothing. Okay. So <laughs> you know. You'll, 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 even when you, even if you only have two years of life left for the character or whatever the max age is, you're still going to get more play out of that character than, than, than you probably, you, you won't kill that character off with age. What's more likely going to happen is the AI is going to be stupid doing automatic bullshit and walk out the airlock without an EVA suit and space itself and turn itself into a big old fucking plum. <laughs> you know <clears throat> so yeah but this game's got really fucking super crazy shipbuilding mechanics and modifying mechanics so like each of these little squares is a tile that has to be placed I purchased this ship already built I just had to clean it up I built bought a fixer upper okay cost me damn near three million dollars but I bought it Right. Still had to clean it up. Not the point. Each of these fucking tiles can break, right? And then additionally, each of these tiles, there's layers to these tiles. So if I, like, right-click on this one here, I've got a power conduit that runs through that square, and then there's a wall and a floor tile. Right? All three of those things have to be placed, or any combination of them. Floor obviously has to be there. The wall doesn't necessarily, power doesn't necessarily, but you get what I mean, right? And there's other things too, like air pumps and stuff like that. Atmospheric pressure is a thing. If you'll notice by my mouse or my cursor here, there's this little fucking set of numbers there. That's uh, the blue is nitrogen, the green is oxygen, and the white is uh, CO2. And then the red is the temperature, which is in Kelvin. All right, so this is all shit you have to keep track of, because if any of that starts changing for no reason, you might want to start investigating your ship. 
figure out if you have a leak. I have sensors that warn me when shit like that is off substantially, specifically when it's below where it needs to be. And then I have pumps that are attached to those same sensors that will turn on when the sensors are tripped. So managing it's pretty automatic. But then there's other fucking crazy things like here's my my uh, my fusion reactor. This is the control panel for it. To power up my reactor, you set your power bus to battery and your core purge to RGH. You wait for the last cap light to change from red to green. Then you turn on your lasso line and your peel feed switch. And then you turn on the cryo switch. And then you hit the fuel regulator, the field coils, the MDH switch, and then you can hit the ignition switch to turn it on. And then I can flip it over to charge my ship batteries. <laughs> like, this shit's fucking insane. Oh no, that's just how I recharge the ship when I'm when I can't go back to port. Cause like space is big. Like this, like right now I am. How far am I? I'm almost 500 kilometers away from the uh, from the port. And to top it off, the port is more or less on the wrong side of the planet from me right now. And then to throw in into <laughs> and that well I I'm passionate about this game. I love this game. I've been playing it for like the last month off and on. Um <laughs> but then to top it off, right? So everything is moving. This planet is rotating, which means this station moves. All of this stuff is moving, right? But this is just the local system, right? This is just the local planet. You see this green line? That's the orbital path that this planet is following, right? So if I go from station, like, this is a huge, huge zoom out from that, right? But I can go even farther. This is the inner planets. But wait, there's more. Then we've got the outer planets. If I go to the inner planets really quick, Venus is like right here. <laughs> Venus is right here, right? I did the fucking math the other fucking day. Like literally like a week ago. Moving at one kilometer per second, it would take me literally like six months of sitting with the game on 16 times speed, not doing anything to get from where I am to Venus. It is because it is like 1.5 ish AU away from me, right, from where I am right now, right? Which, in perspective, is around 225 million kilometers. <laughs> uh. Now, this game is early access, so we don't have things like super fast travel and shit. So, um, in the next game build release, uh, version 0.14 is supposed to have uh, a fusion drive called the Torch Drive, which uses a reactor fusion plume to propel the ship in a direction. And you're supposed to to be used that for interplanetary travel. And it'll be, like, illegal to use it in the local systems, right? So, like, where I am right now, 
where I'm like 400 some kilometers away from the station, you have to be outside that system's nav buoy system for it to be legal for you to fire up that torch drive, supposedly, is what the idea is. Otherwise, they'll like shoot you down or something. So, something about the radioactivity from the fucking, uh, 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 the, the reactor plume. It contaminates the local system or something, the planets and shit, I guess. Oh my god. You know, it's funny is I tried to, like go to venus one night in my other playthrough that broke um and i ran out of fuel by the time i got to the nav buoys with the ship that i was using now admittedly i know a few more things now that i didn't know in that playthrough so that's less likely to happen now but that's a lot of fuel burn just to get that far to even be able to use the fucking uh, reactor propulsion. Now, the interesting thing, too, if you'll notice, like this navigation screen that I've got up here, there's a whole bunch of information on the right hand side here. Like, for example, like my current target is the planetary station right um and it tells me what type of station it is and how big it is and shit like that below that you've got your relative velocity which is how fast you are moving in relation to your target that is not actual speed that is just what you are moving in relation to them right so i'm gonna explain this in very simple terms if you have a car, if you're driving a car and it's driving at 60 miles per hour and the person you're following is driving at 50 miles per hour, your relative velocity is 10 miles per hour to that target. It's basically the difference, positive or negative. Um, the VCRS velocity is your sideways drift however much per however much distance per second okay in relation to your target how far to the left or the right that you're drifting uh range rng that's your range the distance uh brg is your bearing so that's kind of the direction that you're pointing which is honestly irrelevant information to me for me, VCRS just has to be as close to zero as possible. And I know I'm moving in the right direction, right? At least, kind of. Um, I should be moving in the right direction. If I'm not moving in the right direction and this is zero, that means I'm moving backwards. But that's an entirely other thing. Um, RCS is the amount of fuel I have for my maneuvering thrusters. It's pretty self-explanatory. Delta V is the actual physical velocity that you are moving. So while I am moving five meters, almost six meters per second in relation to the station, I am actually moving 4.14 kilometers per second. Because everything's actually moving. Like, if I click a point in here, and then unpause the game, notice how my cursor moves? My little crosshair thing is now moving. It's not because it's moving off the track, it's because what I have targeted, which is nothing, which is in that sector, is actually moving away from me. Right? That's what that means. So that means all of this stuff is actually moving in the opposite direction of where this cursor is moving. Right? Because I'm actually targeting nothing. Now, if I turn targeting off and kind of zoom out a little bit, right? And just 
turn targeting off. You'll notice how all of this ship is now shifting away, slowly but surely. It's because I'm now focused over here, and this is all moving away from over here. How do I not get vertigo? <laughs> to be very truthful. Um, I don't pay attention to this very much, except for when I'm docking and undocking. Or picking my next destination. Right? Uh, what I pay attention to is literally the VREL number and the VCRS number. And that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, my ETA, obviously. Because as I said before, as long as VCRS is all as close to zero as possible, I know I'm moving in the right direction. And if I'm not, I'm going backwards. And it just means I need to turn my ship or just hit a maneuvering thruster in that direction to correct. To get the, the positive motion again, right? I'm not going to lie, this game took me a little bit to, to, to learn. But now I'm about to show you some of the cooler things with this game. Because I'm about to dock, or I'm about to disembark on this uh, uh, derelict ship that I just docked with right before you uh, came, or before you jumped in the channel, or I was on my way to when you jumped in the channel. You get to see some cool shit. This is some stuff that I learned that I could do the other day. That makes my life as a fucking space scrapper so much fucking easier. Now, rule number one of any video game. Before stepping into unknown territory, you hit quick save. Especially when you're like me and set your auto saves to be only an hour apart. I don't care about that alarm. That's whatever. Now. Oh. Ha ha. I have a forbidden zone that I turn on and off so my character can't accidentally space himself while I have him in autopilot repairing the shit that I have him salvage. <laughs> I forgot to turn it off. So now we step into the airlock. We let the door close behind us. So I don't want anything leaking out into here and vice versa, right? So now I've stepped onto the other ship. Now, there are two options here to get this ship up and running. I can turn on this switch right here and it'll just work, right? But let's say this switch doesn't work or it's broken, destroyed, whatever, right? How am I going to get power across? Because the ship's pretty fucking blackout, right? We'll pretend this switch isn't here, right? We'll just say it's fucking broken. So what I would do is since there's a power conduit right here that still has power, or it's receiving power probably from this battery right here, what I would do, <clears throat> this is why I keep jumper cables with me, is I would drop a jumper cable right here. So that should link where there's power to where there's no power and the whole thing lights up like a fucking Christmas tree. I just hotwired the fucking ignition, basically. <laughs> so, in this game, there are things that can happen. Oh, these alarms are gonna bug me. There are things that can happen, like... So while I can see other ships and stuff on my radar, on my radar LADAR system, my navigation, whatever you want to call it, what I can't see are things like micrometeorites because they're too small. And they're moving really fast, and when they do hit your ship, they tend to do some catastrophic damage. 
I had one take out a fucking wall that didn't matter, as well as the power conduit that was in it. And while I didn't lose cabin pressure because I didn't know it was a wall that didn't matter, that's why I couldn't find it, by the way, I lost power to three quarters of my ship. And I was pretty much drifting in space at like 150 meters per second towards a fucking destination with no navigation control because it knocked out my navigation antenna and everything, right? So what I did, and I was still new, but I'm looking around my ship, which was my starter ship, and it had sticking out of the wall in various spots jumper cables that didn't do anything, right? So I went over to these jumper cables and I immediately ripped them out of the fucking wall and then bridged power from one side of my ship where my batteries were to the other side of my ship where I had no power. That way I could get my power back up and running just in time to get my maneuvering back under control to fucking die and not crash into what I was heading towards. Um, so two ships can't dock to the same ship at the same time, but that doesn't mean the derelicts are uninhabited. Sometimes I'll run into other ship breakers, other times I'll run into, uh, pirates. Pirates, I typically just gun them down and ask questions later. I just don't even fuck with them. Um, they'll, they'll demand your shit no matter what you do. And while they're waiting for a response, I'll just pull out my gun and I'll fucking shoot them. Or at least try to. Well, as far as weapons go, I don't have skills in firearms, but I'll st still shoot at them, graze them, whatever, and then, from there, I'll dive in with my fucking good old fucking cutlass and proceed to start hacking and slashing. Um, there are energy weapons. Um, the Smart Link Quink Quicksilver Handgun. It fires a... Uh, what is it? A hollow gel ammunition that is designed to not rupture the hull if it hits the hull. It'll still damage other shit, but it doesn't do as much damage to, like, hull tiles and stuff. Right? That being said, it's also a little bit less lethal, too. But it still gets the message across. So I'll take a first couple pot shots at him. And then I'll switch over to my fucking sword here, and I'll just proceed to start chopping and stabbing and slashing. The goal is to do enough damage to their EVA suit to cause it to start leaking so they start asphyxiating almost right away. Whoever gets the first good, solid blow is the one who's going to win. Because typically these encounters are going to happen when the ship is still in a vacuum. Right now there's no ox oxygen right now in this fucking thing. There's nitrogen, but there's no oxygen. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Um, so let's go ahead and open this door. And we're gonna restore this. That's an oxygen sensor. I'm gonna guess that the sensor on this, yeah, is broken. So we're going to wire it to this one instead. And that should get atmosphere pumping into the cabin. Yep. Oxygen levels are now slowly rising. And now the air is breathable. And it looks like the heater's still functioning because the temperature's at 296 Kelvin still. We're going to go ahead and restore that before it breaks. I would like heat when I'm doing this. Okay. And there's the thermostat. We're going to go ahead and restore that just to make sure that doesn't break. No thermostat means no working heat. Can't have that. All right. So now... The good news is, we now have atmosphere that is actually very similar to Earth. It's almost 80-20. I'm going to go ahead and open this room here to get air flowing into this room. It's 
Probably gonna trigger the fucking alarms again for a second. Yeah, literally just a second. And now that there's atmosphere in this ship, I can go back over here and do this work in more comfortable clothing. Take off my helmet. Throw this back in my bag. Put my pants on. Put my shoes on. Put that back on my back. And now... I don't need the electrical grid visibility turned on anymore. And now, I'm gonna go through the ship here. I should actually, hold on, I need to, uh... I need to grab one of these bags. Part of being a space scrapper is salvaging pieces, parts. Because not all of the equipment, technology, whatever, I'm going to salvage is going to be functional. Like, there will be broken thrusters and broken reactors and RCS intakes and stuff like that that I'll salvage and I'll be straight up busted. But if I have the parts laying around, I can fix them. So, I'm going to go through the ship first here really quick and just find all the pieces parts that are in relatively good condition. You know, like that 90% motor's pretty good, that 86% motor's pretty good. I'll take that other 90% motor. 97% LCD paddle. Cool. Um, grab those. I'll grab a heat sink. Um, so, the way it works in this game, remember I mentioned there's this corporation that owns everything, basically, including the cops, who are more like hired stooges to work for the corporation. Uh, the corporation, whose name I can't pronounce, but I just call ATI, um, they have claim over all of the wrecks. They sell out licenses for $5,000 for a single day. For people to go out and salvage anything and everything they want off of the wrecks. You are, however, forbidden to take them as a whole and fix them up unless you purchase them outright. And the price ranges are dramatically reduced from the price you would get for a regular used ship of the same type. <clears throat> so, in theory, you can purchase one of these derelicts for a few hundred thousand. If you've got the pieces parts laying around, you can patch them up and get them working and or improve them, and you can then resell them if you wanted to, but you have to buy them first. I don't like to go through that process unless I intend on keeping the ship, um, because it... I'm going to put it to you this way. When I bought my ship used, not derelict, but used... It took me over two real-life hours, partially fast-forwarding time, to get it restored to new-ish condition from the condition that it was in when I got it. Basically, everything more or less works. It just needs to all be restored. You shouldn't need too many pieces parts. That's the difference between derelicts and used ships. Derelicts, everything can be completely fucking busted and you have to repair it all. Used ships, everything should be working. For how long is not guaranteed. If you're fast enough, you can restore it all before it's a problem, which I usually do right away. Now, typically what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do right now, especially with this ship, is I'm going to go through and I'm going to grab things like this turbo air pump, this D2O canister, this reactor, uh, these RCS thrusters, the nav station, um, and the uh, RCS intakes. 
and I might even grab a nitrogen canister. And I'll take those back to my ship and restore and or repair them and then move on to the next ship and rinse and repeat. And then once I have a full cargo hold of parts that I've salvaged and repaired, I will then go back to the station or wait for the station to come back around so I can get back to it. Um, I will go back to the station and I will sell everything for right around a million dollars. Basically, I'm at the life is good stage of this game. <laughs> like, my mortgage is paid off. Like, I owe nobody fucking anything. People ask me for money. Typically, unless you're stupid, you start with a small junker ship that's, like, barely big enough to hold, like, a reactor and maybe a couple random parts and you go out and you cherry pick reactors and bring them back to the station and sell them, right? Um, or to the black market is what I prefer to do, honestly. Black market pays a better price, but you gotta be friends with the black market peeps. Um, yep. More money in the black market, usually. Usually. But with the black market, you're also at the mercy of what they want to buy. So the licensed salvage kiosk, where you go buy your $5,000 legal salvage license so the cops leave you alone, um, they will buy everything. The scrap kiosk will buy specific junk, and the black dealer will buy specific, like new condition tech. And it changes. Like, I, you can literally talk to them one second and then close out of the window and then talk to them again like two seconds later and they'll have a different fucking uh, list of things they need. So you can literally just kind of sit there and camp and wait till you see a good price for the things that you're selling. Most everything goes to the black market. Typically, the uh, licensed salvage kiosk will get my air pumps and my EVA battery chargers and stuff like that. Other cool things too. So when you buy a ship, like I've got, like I bought mine, you're not restricted to keep it as is, and you're you can do more than just expand the tech that's installed. You can even add floors and well, not like not floors as in levels, but you can expand outward if you want. Just keep in mind your technology that has to be on the outside of the ship when you're building, right? So you might have to uninstall something and move it if you build around it. <laughs> right? I don't know, as, bad, as corrupt as, as this game's government is, I'm doing pretty decent here. Making a living fucking breaking ships. I've just got to be careful because my salvage license is good for like five more hours. And then I gotta go back and renew it. Because I forgot to do it before I left the port. Well, depending on what time it is when I get back to fucking port, it could be fucking a little chaos. Because I don't want to be in space when my license expires. Because if the cops decide to board my ship while I've got all that scrap and no valid license, it doesn't matter if I salvaged it before the license expired. 
my license is not current and I'm hauling scrap. And they'll take all your shit. Or you can kill them. But then that has repercussions. Such as a football team style gang bang the moment you fucking dock on the station to try and fucking sell shit. I think I'd rather just be back home before curfew. Thank you. <laughs> I really don't like dealing with the cops, man. They're assholes. I mean, unless you're really fucking lucky and you can kill them before they can report you, you're screwed, right? So... Well, you better one-shot them if you're gonna fucking kill them, because if they can fucking... If they can send a fucking report, you're fucked. You're just fucked. They will literally ram your ship, too. If they're fucking pissed off enough. Maybe the prison football team gangbang. <laughs> Exit only. I don't judge. I just don't participate either. Thank you. But I don't feel the need to have to say that either. <laughs> I have never once in my life had the need to tell somebody no. Never once ever. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The true fear, the guys that are truly afraid, they're just afraid that they're going to get treated by a man the way they treat women. Those are the guys that are truly afraid. Oh, yeah, totally. I get that.
I totally get that. I have basically my rule is I have no problems as long as the word no is respected. I mean that's not quite where I was going with that but that's a thing too for some people good on all that freaky shit <clears throat> personally Yeah, you know, this is the weakest winner we've had in probably easily 10 years. Like, literally, we had no snow until after Christmas. Like, literally none. It's like insane. We almost made it to New Year's without snow. So yeah, this is Minnesota just catching up. But to be honest, it's been more raining the last couple of days than anything. We had snow, like we had heavy snow on Sunday. And it was supposed to continue with snow, and it's been more rain than anything else. Well, okay. The battery shorted out and went kaput. <laughs> Degradation is a thing. I've watched so many things just fucking degrade and fall apart right in front of me. I've had things break while dis uh, while uninstalling them.
Ah, uh, that's my playlist. I rotate through a lot, a lot of music. My my music taste has further expanded since the club. <laughs> like, dramatically. I haven't been sharing. You should still be able to see my stuff on Spotify. be like. You never had Spotify? I thought you did. Huh. Especially with this religiously as we were using it for work towards the end there. That makes it really hard for me to share songs, though, because everything I listen to is on Spotify. And, uh, no, but I am over a thousand now. Up to almost 1,100, actually. Usually eight to ten people every night, give or take, depending on the night and when I start. So, you know, weekends suck. This is probably going to fall apart on me before I get to, re or get to uh, restoring it. But... I do have a YouTube channel up and running, though, now. That's got a bazillion... It's got all of my VOD. At least back to a point, anyway. Um... Most of my uh, Twitch stuff, all the way back to like a Project Zomboid playthrough, maybe, should be on there. 
upload everything every single day when I get done here. Fuck, am I gonna put this? Guess I could drop it right here. Does it fit right there? Oh, damn. Crazy. Oh, that's fucking cool. I think I've seen you post something about that on Facebook.
Where are you going? So did you have a good time? Sorry, using brain power to inventory Tetris. or kid.
I want to go for this ship here. Let's see what this is. Wait for the spin to go back around. I need to try and get around this guy. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right about there. Oh. Yeah, right about there. I should clear. is never good. God. Because I gotta trust my navigation computer, man. Navigation computer says I'm going to clear this ship. <clears throat> it is going to be close, though. In the realm of close things, you know. Oh, crap.
I'm being boarded. That's what's beeping. That motherfucking ship. I was saying I'm just gonna have to trust my na my navigation computer and s and believe I'm gonna track right by it. It fucking locked on. It's a fucking pirate. She's got a fucking machete. Get back here, you little fucking bitch. Lost one of my fucking carts. So mad. Oh, yeah. Bitch bit off way more than she could chew. But I gotta do some repairs.
I'm taking their fusion reactor. The biggest, scariest part of all that was the maneuvering I had to do to slow the fuck down. Nah, I'm just taking the reactor, because that thing's worth like 100 to 120 grand. The rest of the shit can go fuck itself, I really don't care enough. I might go hack open this box really quick and see what's in it, but... I really don't care. This ship is literally identical to the one I just salvaged. Oh, hey, while well, I'm in here. Go peek at your files. Good morning, Cloud. You just missed me fight off a fucking pirate. <laughs> who boarded my ship, and now I'm taking their reactor and leaving. This is going to be a very fucking sketchy undocking.
Okay. Zones. Eaters. Oh yeah, I showed him my lead pipe already. More like my lead fucking cutlass, but... <clears throat> it's after I unloaded, like, fucking three quarters of a fucking magazine out of my fucking energy gun at him. I did more damage to my own shit than I did to them with the damn gun. But they're wearing an EVA suit, so... I... Didn't want to risk them getting the first strike in while I was unarmored, so. Oh, the fucking micrometeor. This trip is cursed. Looks like we got hit over here. Whoa. No, we got hit right there. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess that's next. <laughs> oh, fuck. I just gotta restore it. God damn it. Okay, where is it? There it is.
I probably burned some RCS fuel and all of that. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down a third of a tank. So let's go look at these RCS tanks real quick. Figure out who all is empty. These three, it looks like. That one's still. Oh, nope. They're all empty. All four of them. And that one is half. Um, the damage that was caused was caused more by my own negligent fire. But yes, there was damage done. And I'm sure there's a little bit of stress damage done to my fucking hull, too. From the forced dock. But that's gonna take me forever to fucking sort out. one of my fucking work carts. That sucks. Those things aren't cheap. Damaged a couple others. Damaged that door. I blew out two of these power conduits here. Luckily I've got redundant power routes through the ship from the batteries so when the main breaks I'm not like dead dead. So, <laughs> mm, I think, oh, yeah, I probably still need to refill a couple of these tanks. The 
The shitty thing is that cost me a lot of fuel in that maneuver to reduce the amount of damage to the sh ship overall. Because I was doing emergency braking maneuvers to try and slow down. Because I was fucking cruising. Because I've got a long distance to haul uh, to the next fucking derelict. Thankfully, fuel is one of the things that I'll salvage from a lot of these ships. And I store it in a mass storage container and then distribute it back into nitrogen canisters as necessary. Which is what I'm doing right now. Them pirates literally don't give a fuck. They're in their EVA suits, so even if their ship takes damage, they're going to be fine. And if they happen to kill us, well, more loot for them. They really don't give two fucks, which is why I shoot first and ask questions later. Since they're fucking rude. This pump is running out of gas. <laughs> I have to switch to the other one. I have to salvage more gas canisters, too. I do have a bunch of full tanks already stored in these storage bays with the red and white stripes on them in case I do run out of fuel. But those are like my emergency cans. When I've got time between derelicts like this, still, I burnt like half. I burnt half my fucking time that I was gonna be freaking spending repairing shit, just repairing my fucking shit and refueling my shit. God damn it! All right, well, we gotta uh, do a lot of this shit real quick. That's. I probably shouldn't complain. That's the very first pirate that's actually had the balls to try and board me in this whole playthrough so far. Like, I really, really shouldn't complain too much. Usually they're little bitches. I have killed a fair number of them docking on random derelicts where they're kind of just sitting there waiting. Sometimes. But again, same deal. I ask, I shoot first and ask questions later. If I click on them, I, it'll tell me if they're a pirate or if they're a shipbreaker. If they're a shipbreaker, I'll leave them alone. Because they're just making a living. You know? Fucking, I'll let them... I might cherry pick something off the fucking ship. But otherwise, I'll leave it to them. And move on to the next one.
Nightmare Frost Nix. Thank you for the raid, man. How was your stream? What were you playing? Welcome, raiders. Welcome to the Church of the Lead Pipe. For those who partake in, in the greenery, please feel free to have a seat in our rotation and take a puff. For those of you who do not, never fear. We always pass the ditch to the left, but most importantly, do have a good time. Ah, you played some Helldivers? Nice. I'm still playing Ostronauts. Yeah, no problem, man. Anytime. I got you, dude. Oh, God, there's more fucking parts outside. Assholes. Actually, that was probably from that fucking meteorite. Now you're fighting robots? Oh, good God.
Oh, I lost an antenna. Where are you going? Why? Exactly have time to fix this. Why? That was quick, thank God. Come up, swing up and grab these real fast. It's fucking trash. Really? It's fucking trash. Five minutes from target.
losing pressure. I think it's stabilizing. And it's from the airlock. Fucking auto save. Save. Really? Fuck off. Right when I'm in a fucking docking procedure, five kilometers out. Bullshit timing, man. Fuck out of here.
isn't a very big ship. Looks like it's got Hydra RCSs though. Yeah. That's kind of a decent sell. It just power visibility save. Nah, this thing's tiny as fuck. Hardly worth coming out here. Oh yeah, definitely not much to this fucker. There isn't even fucking atmospheric generators in here. But it's so small, it probably wouldn't take me much to fucking put some air in here from my own ship. But honestly, I'm going to grab the RCS, all the thrusters, and the nav station and get the fuck out of here. No, not even close. I won't be going there for a while. Like, four more hours. I'll start heading that way. Because my salvage license expires at, like, just before 4 a.m. And right now it's 1923. Oh, I'll just have to temporarily put these on here. Might as well grab the arse, or the uh, nitrogen canisters too. At least these three, anyway. This one's almost empty. There's like no space here. <laughs> Now, if I were in, like, my starter ship, it'd be a little different, because I'd be going out to, like, one or two of these derelicts, and then going back. Maybe three. 
and I'd be cherry picking reactor cores or something. Maybe some hydra intakes if I see them. Like I said, I'm at the life is good stage of this game where I got a reactor that can recharge my ship batteries. I've got extra fuel salvaged in, in stored canisters for later use, later dispensing. I've got a CO2 scrubber to keep my oxygen clean so I don't keep burning through oxygen and even if the CO2 scrubber goes out I've got freaking three oxygen pumps and three nitrogen pumps and it's just make money now you know and then the big thing is the storage space that's really the key thing because like, those early ships don't have any storage, and that's what holds you back. Yep. That's your end goal, is to upgrade. Because <laughs> you just, you can't do much of anything until you do. But before you can do that, you have to pay off your first mortgage. Uh-oh. My guy has to take a shit.
Yes, taking a poop is a thing in this game. I'm sure it stinks inside that helmet right now. It's been a while since I've had to punch holes in the sides of a ship to get tech out.
Time for the last thruster. And then I'm gonna drag the nav console in and drop it somewhere. And then I'm gonna come out with a fucking truck and haul all this shit in. Grab the nav console. Oh, I should check these bins real quick. There's something cool in here. Doubt it. But maybe. Nope. Nothing else that seems to fit in that spot, so.
Definitely not going back to the station anytime soon. It is literally directly opposite the, the uh, side of the planet from me. I'm gonna have to literally wait for it to come back around. But that's fine. That's totally fine. The amount of time it takes to get from point A to point B. not the worst thing in the world. <clears throat> Especially with the ability to stay out here damn near indefinitely. As long as I've got food. Why you're not doing auto for this now, but whatever. Probably almost no, not quite. Getting there though.
All right, bird. It was really good to see you. You get some good sleep, or at least try to. If not, well, I'll be here for probably another hour or so. <clears throat> and then I'll be back again tomorrow.
Thank you. 
Fucking hungry. God damn it. He's going to be getting tired soon, too. He was up for a while. half expect this fucker out here to lock on to us and try and dock, which is just going to be a disaster.
20 kilometers away. I feel we should be fine, even though I don't like this rotation very much. A really fast, hard rotation. Totally didn't mean to do that. Whoops. Now let's fix this now. Hey, another bag. Wait a minute, yes. I'll come back for it though. <clears throat> Get the power up and running. Oh, we need to fix that, huh? Great. Um Alright, so we can jack power into the door here.
seem like much, but it's a lot when you figure the size of the ship that it's trying to pressurize. Bet it's not. switch back out of the EPA suit.
<laughs> I didn't realize what that was. Pull this thruster quick. Step back onto our ship. Save next. velocity changed. And it's going to be a while before he gets here, but yeah, you know what I mean. I gotta save an exit because we're at almost 12 hours here and I gotta wrap things up otherwise YouTube's not gonna let me upload this. And there are a lot of you guys that are coming back to watch the Astronauts VOD, so I figure you don't want to miss it a day of me doing nothing but scrap. Affirmative, cleared for close approach, switching to 118.50, mic 34. Right, who do we got streaming right now? We're going to find someone to raid, smoke some weed. Let's raid Zemi. <clears throat> well, our raid target tonight is going to be Zemi. And when we get over there, you guys, I want y'all to give them a follow and show them the love and support from our community and show them that the Church of the Lead Pipe is always with them. Um, As for me, I'm taking another puff, getting ready to get out of here. As always, I'd like to thank y'all for coming and hanging out with me tonight. I like, or I love and appreciate all y'all. If you like my content, <coughs> be sure to click the follow button so you get notifications as to when I'm live. <coughs> <coughs> I'm here Monday through Thursday nights from 6 p.m. Central Standard Time until at least 4 a.m. 
and Saturday and Monday mornings from 1 a.m. Central Standard Time until 4 a.m. <coughs> that means I'll be back again tonight when I crawl from under my rock. I will be back for some more astronauts. <coughs> and my friends and crew and homies and all those wonderful things that you guys are over there on uh, YouTube. Thank you again for coming back and checking out the VODs every day when I upload them. I really appreciate it. If you <coughs> if you like the VODs, if you like the channel, if you want to support the channel, all you got to do is click the subscribe button and the bell. That'll give you a notification as to when I upload a new VOD. And then if you uh, click the like button, that'll help out a lot with the algorithms, you guys. I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> and then as for those of you over there on YouTube who are also members of the Twitch community here, as always, every single night I'm here smoking weed and jamming out to tunes and playing some games. So I invite you guys to come smoke a bowl with me. All you got to do is click the link that I'm going to leave down below in the description. That'll bring you right here to our channel page here on Twitch. If you click the follow button, you'll get a notification as to when I'm live. <coughs> I look forward to smoking a bowl with you guys. Anyway, with that, it's time for me to take my last puff and get out of here. And with that last puff, you guys, I am out of here. Thanks again for coming and hanging out. I'll be back again tonight when I crawl up under my rock. But until then, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Stay safe and stay high. I love you all. Peace.